Hello there, fellow Scorpios. Thank you so much for stopping by for your monthly in-depth tarot forecast. I am changing the format on this forecast this time. Instead of looking at each uh, month divided down by weeks, I'm just going to divide the month pretty much in half. I was getting a lot of redundant energies coming up for several of the signs whenever I had it divided up that many times. So we're just going to look at two halves of the month. So this is for January. So the first half we're going to look at is going to be January 3rd through the 16th because in the December readings I went out through January 2nd. So this will start January 3rd. Um, first portion will run through the 16th and then the second portion will be the 17th through the 31st. So for right now we're looking at um, energies for the dates listed in the corner there. And then last thing I want to say is cross watchers. If you're here, you're welcome to be here. Absolutely. Please keep in mind though that um, when you're cross watching, energies are not reversible on my channel. So that means that this reading is about Scorpio. It is for Scorpio. The energies don't go back and forth this way and that way. Um, I'm one of the readers who actually knows who I'm reading for and who I'm reading about, I guess. I don't know why other people have reversible energies. Kind of strange to me. Anyway, let me get off my soapbox. You're welcome to be here if you're a cross-watcher, but what you need to know is that this is going to be information about the Scorpio that you care about in your life. This is not going to be information about you. If you want information about you, then what you want to do is check out your sun sign, your moon sign, or your rising sign, or any combination thereof. La -da 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 -da. All right, fellow Scorpios, we do have cards down on the table. Let's see what's coming up for us. The first thing that we are looking at has to do with our environment, and our environment is any place where we have energy or effort invested. So I've got something really interesting coming up here. There is something that is kind of toxic. Mm, I'm going to take out kind of. There is something that's toxic going on in our environment, but in spite of whatever this toxic thing is that's going on, we are still managing to um, continue to pull forward and do the things that we want to do to accomplish the goals that we want to accomplish. And we have things really going in our favor, even in spite of that toxicness. Kind of liking that part. And we're kind of used to toxicness, but um, yeah, a lot of times it'll kind of throw us off. I'm liking that it's not throwing us off here. It's We're letting whatever that toxicness is, we're letting it be in its own little box and we're handling our own stuff. Um, let's see, let's look at our subconscious leanings. So it does look to me like subconscious leanings. What do we have here? Looks to me like we are looking out over um, our legacy. What are we leaving behind? What are people, um, how are we impacting the people in our sphere of influence? Are we impacting them in the way that we want to? And I think that we're finding that we would like to make some adjustments on the way that we're impacting those people in our sphere of influence. And so our subconscious leanings have to do with this idea that we're not really happy with what's going on right now or what we're doing right now to impact other people. But we are a little bit stumped as far as what can we do to impact people in the way that we want to. So our subconscious is working on that. Alrighty, so let's look next at La -da 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 -da. learning style and also communication style during this time frame, fellow Scorpios. There's a lot of information that we're picking up just very easily. Um, there's no blockages or impediments to us having that information. It really is just a matter of we want to find it out and so we go look it up or talk to somebody who knows. So we have a lot of good information showing up that way. No blockages, super easy, just kind of flowing in. We've also, we're picking up a lot of information um, and learning things through conversations that we're having with other people. La da da da, and then what's this last thing? 
that I'm looking at here. It looks to me like there's some kind of situation that we are getting a lot of information in on. And I almost even want to say we're getting an overload of information. And so it's it's to the point that it's getting hard to pick through what's the important information worth paying attention to and what is information that is just really not um, influencing our lives or influencing us. Like which one of these are we... You know, how do we pick through and find the stuff that's actually pertinent for us on some type of particular topic as we go through this time frame? Now, looking at communication style, I do think that there's a lot of love um, that we are expressing, a lot of affection, a lot of care that we're expressing to some of the people around us. I think part of our communication style during this time frame has to do with... Um, acts of service or gifts. So we may be doing acts of service for people or we may be giving somebody gifts during this time frame as a way of expressing how we feel about them. And also I feel like the things that we're expressing during this time frame are very honest, they're very transparent. Um, and I think that there could be some people in our sphere of influence that uh, don't quite trust that it's as honest as it actually is and so I think that in those cases we may be feeling like we have to sort of um, take the bull by the horns there and just address that issue as part of our communication just to let somebody know how honest we are actually being and you know what I'm looking back at this no I really don't want to look at that I was thinking I might look at the toxic stuff in our environment to see what that is. I don't really want to look at that. I think I do want to look at what is this where we're feeling unhappy in our subconscious leanings about though, as far as how we're impacting other people. I want to look at that more closely. So that's going to be our expanded reading for this time frame. And there will be a link down below if you want to know more about our subconscious leanings and how we're impacting people and what kind of changes we want to make. All right, moving on though, next thing we're looking at is work. And right now it looks to me like as we go through this time frame from the 3rd to the 16th, it looks like there is a shutdown of work for many of us Scorpios. And I feel like this may very much have to do with some type of government decision or government strategy or action or command or judgment or whatever you want to call it here. And so I feel like work is just not going very well. And in fact, um, we may be released from work. We may not be allowed to work um, once we get into the end of this time frame. I think that might be a little bit questionable or debatable as we move up to the end of this. But once we get to the end of this, I think we may be uh, finding ourselves without having a work to go to or a job to have, even if we're working from home. I am not liking that, guys. All right, let's look at... that part of our uh, personality that's being grown or expanded as we go through this time frame. This does show that we are working in partnership with somebody else who's in our sphere of influence right now, but we're not really happy with what that partnership is bringing about. And so I feel like as we're going through this time frame, we're actually looking for uh, somebody else to partner up with. And I'm going to tell you, this feels like work uh, for most of us. This is probably a situation where, you know, we just saw with work that, you know, there's some kind of judgment that comes down that sort of shuts us out of work. So this may be the idea that we're not very happy with how that's going. And so we are looking for um, somebody else who will hire us or somebody else who, um, who will sign a contract with us, you know. So there's definitely stuff like that going on here. Ah, la da da, la da da da. 
La -da -da -da. Next thing that we're looking at talks to me about those things that we stand for during this time frame. So this is something that somebody has come to us and they've uh, wanted an explanation or maybe they've even confronted us and we've had to defend this situation or this person or this decision. We'll see what this is. So it looks to me, Scorpio, like there is some kind of attraction going on between Scorpio and somebody who is in power, somebody who is a natural leader who likes to lead the way. Um, this could be a boss. This could also be uh, a significant other or somebody who wants to be our significant other. And so there is some attraction there. And attraction doesn't have to be just uh, sexual either. It can be, you know, if we feel like we have a really great supervisor, that can be something that would show up in this type of spread as well. So there's some attraction between ourselves and this other person who has natural leadership tendencies, maybe even is in a position of leadership in our life. Um, and even though there's an attraction, there's definitely a fight there. And it looks to me like there is an acceptance that um, that even though this person is somebody who um, seems attractive in whatever position they're in in our lives, we're coming to an understanding or a recognition that um, that there is um, a certain level that they can be active at in our lives and then beyond that is too much, beyond that we're not so compatible with this other person. Now how the other person sees us once we've explained that to to them is they see us as somebody who you know really expects to have an even energy exchange with another person. They also see us as sort of holding our ground for that like not settling for a situation a friendship or a relationship or a work situation where there's not an even exchange of energy. We're standing our ground there. We've made our decision. And they're seeing that. They're seeing that we've made our decision. We're sticking to that decision of expecting, you know, if this is a work situation, expecting fair pay for what we're doing. If this is a relationship situation, expecting somebody to be able to do things for us as well, not just us do for them. Um, and if this is a friendship, basically the same thing, expecting this to be a two-way street in the friendship, not just us being there always to support somebody else, but vice versa as well. Okay, so let's look at our flex point, fellow Scorpios. This is where things start to change a little bit. We have a lesson or experience that's going on here. And this changes our uh, perspective, usually, which changes our trajectory. So this is why it's the flex point. So the lesson or experience here is that we have a goal that we are uh, working towards. And as we're working towards this goal, it's not just us, but it's also other people with us to help us to meet this goal. However, um, I think that we are having a hard time with our input into this goal. We're having a hard time holding up our end of working towards this goal with somebody else. Okay. We just have too much to do. Our plate is so full that we're having a hard time fulfilling our obligations here. What's going on at the same time? I think that we are being incredibly independent, self-sufficient. Um, we're feeling good about the things that are going on in our own personal life that are under our control particularly. Um, but we do have a lot of scattered energy and a lot of that scattered energy has to do with communication going back and forth between ourselves and between other people as well. And I don't feel like it's just one person. I do think there are other people that we're communicating with. La -da 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 -da. Now this is interesting. What else is going on at the same time? So we've got a lot of people that we're communicating with. It's actually scattering our energy. Um, but at the same time, we are finding a way 
to sneak away and get some alone time as well. And that is where we feel like we're starting to heal up our heart. We're starting to heal up our heart. Our self-esteem has pretty much taken a hit. And so we're trying to get to this point that um, our self-esteem is is getting back to where it should be. And so we're working in some alone time in spite of all this communication with so many other people to do some self-care, basically. And then what do we have? What do we see for the end of this time frame? Where are we? Okay, so there is something that is being brought together, is being healed, is being um, is coming together as one unit where maybe it was a little bit um, scattered before and we're able to complete a goal or a target that we were working on. And not only that, not only are we ending a cycle, but we're beginning a new cycle where we're putting energy and effort, possibly even money, towards something else in a very practical and pragmatic way once we get to the end of this cycle. So this could be that maybe we're paying one bill off and now we're working on paying another bill off. This could be that we have um, finished a class and so now we're moving on to an apprenticeship or maybe we have... Um, yeah, maybe this could also come up in a relationship way where uh, maybe the relationship has moved from one level to the next level, friendship or romantic relationship. So basically what we see here is that there's something going on that we are definitely making progress in once we get to the end of this time frame. So that's what I've got for the first part of the month. I am going to go ahead and do the expanded and see what's going on here with this unhappiness about the impact we're having on others and take a peek at that. And then once I get done with that, I'll come back and we'll look at the rest of the month. So the expanded link will be down below. See you soon. Welcome back, fellow Scorpios. Right now we're going to be looking at January the 17th through the 31st. See what kind of energies come in for that. Looks like we've got a lot on our minds during that time frame, just the way the cards were acting on my hands when I first started to shuffle them. So, let's see. Let's see what comes up. Let's see if any of these guys fall out. Let's see how they do. By the way, those of you who are cross-watchers, once again, you are welcome to be here. Just keep in mind that energy does not shift places around here. It doesn't slip and slide. It is not interchangeable. This video is for Scorpio. It is about Scorpio. If you want to find out about you, you want to check your own rising sign, moon sign, or Venus sign. Or sun sign. Check Venus sign for your love life. Sun sign for how you express in the world. Moon sign for what's going on in your mind and your subconscious, your emotions. And rising sign for... What is rising sign for, actually? I'm not sure. For me, rising sign is my career. But then my sun sign and my Venus sign are the same, so that makes it all kind of confusing. All right. What do we have here? 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 For Scorpio. Okay. Cards are down, fellow Scorpios. Let's take a peek at our environment during the second half of January. Ooh, we're manifesting the things that we want in our environment. We are, um, we are definitely actively manifesting. We're looking around at options for things that we could um, do or have or be to make our environment better. And we are bringing those things out of the inner world and into the manifested world, into the 3D. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I love it when I see stuff like that. Ew, ew. That's awesome. All right, let's look at subconscious leanings. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Fellow Scorpios, what are we doing? 
it looks like we have a couple of situations where people would like to partner up with us or would like to collaborate with us. And I don't think we're really receptive to either one of those situations. I think we've got a situation that is more on a friendly or coworker or colleague type level and we've got another situation where somebody is coming at us uh, in, a, in a more intense type of relationship, whether it's friendship or romantic, whatever. And we're just like, you know, uh, mm -mm, give me my space, back off. I'm not, not ready to be collaborating with anybody, not ready to be partnering up with anybody. That's what's going on in our subconscious. Alrighty, let's look next at learning style and communication style for us Scorpios. Scorpios, Scorpios. We're definitely running into some kind of information that does not give. It does not change. It is not fluid. Um, I feel like this is somebody that we're talking to that uh, is just very stubborn about how they do things. They don't leave any flex room to make a situation more reasonable or more comfortable than what it could be. Also, learning style. Hmm. Learning style, learning style. I think that there's a lot that we are finding out, things that we're looking at that we want to know more about, but I also feel like there's almost this cap on how much information we're being allowed to interact with here. Hmm. I don't like that at all. Mm-hmm. All right, let's look. Learning style also. We are learning a lot through communicating with other people. I do see that here. And I think that... I think what's going on is we're finding out that some of the people around us really see things in heavy-duty black and white with no in-between. And I really think, fellow Scorpios, we're struggling with that. Now, we can be very much black and white. We're definitely stop or go. Um, but I do think that as we get more experience under our belts, we start to see a lot more gray in between the black and white. And so when other people are looking at things as black or white, I think we're just having a hard time understanding that concept. We're having a hard time seeing how things could be fitting into black and white and still be fair. We don't see that as a fair way to, to judge things or situations or people. Looking next at our communication style. I do think that we have um, some type of communication with somebody that could be pretty explosive when we talk. Uh, not literally explosive, but just, you know, the emotions that come out of us could be sudden and overwhelming um, to the other person. And I think we're probably even surprised that we handled it in the way that we did at the power of the emotions behind whatever this is that we're saying in our communication style right now. Also in our communication style, I do think that there's somebody that we're spending some time with or a group of somebody's that we're spending some time with that we just don't feel uncomfortable with quiet time. I think that we could be um, sitting with this person or doing things with this person and not really feel the need to fill up the time or the space and time with talk or chit chat. We're perfectly okay being quiet around that person. Also communication style during this time frame, there is somebody in our sphere of influence that we are, um, we're trying to help them to see the bright side of things. So we're trying to point out the positives in situations whenever they bring them up and they're not in such a positive place. And I think that we're trying to do that in a way that's not going to be offensive. 
um, and they may not even realize exactly what we're trying to do. They may just think, well, that's just the natural turn of the conversation. I think we're a little bit more strategic than that in our communication, especially when we're trying to help somebody. Sometimes we know that somebody may not be that open to direct head-on help or to the idea that maybe we're trying to help them, and so we try to help them like in sideways ways. We get more strategic about it. I really feel like that could be what's going on there. Now, the next thing that I'm looking at does talk to me about work. I'm not liking what I'm seeing. I'm going to tell you straight up. First of all, I feel like there is something going on that you are not very happy about. Um, and I feel like, you know, this is actually something that is bringing some heartache. But as it brings the heartache, as you start to process that, I think you're getting a new inspiration or a new idea about a different direction you can go at work. So this isn't a total loss here because it actually spurs something new to begin, even though it looks really bad right at first. Or maybe not really bad, but somewhat bad right at first. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm looking at talks to me about that part of your personality which is being grown or expanded right now. Mm-hmm. There is something that is not really completed here, and I think you're sort of struggling to tie up the loose ends on this situation. Uh, but instead of completely tying up these loose ends and putting an end to whatever the situation is or finishing it out, I think you're taking a break from it. You're detaching from it a little bit to sort of think about things and regroup before you come back to it. And I think that as you're doing that, you're being very analytical about this, fellow Scorpios, or I should say we are. We're being very analytical about this, much, mo much more so than usual for who we are. All right, next thing that I'm looking at here talks to me about la -da -da. those things that we stand for during this time frame. So this is something somebody has wanted to explain to them or maybe they've confronted us about this. What's going on here? It looks like we've had some kind of disappointment, fellow Scorpios, but we haven't really... Um, let that get us down or let that stop us. We have just instead looked at, okay, well, what opportunities are still available to us? What is it that we can still do to handle this situation? Um, and I think that what the opportunities are in front of us are kind of slow going. They're not manifesting really quickly, although we are putting in energy and effort on them. Um, and so I think we're seeing much slower progress than what we would like to. However, we are still seeing progress. And just the fact that we are seeing progress in this, um, and it feels like there's obstacles that we're going up against here as we're making this progress. And so I think we're feeling really good about the progress that we have made. And I just keep hearing, especially considering the situation or especially considering the circumstances, I keep hearing things like that as I'm looking at these cards. So it looks like, you know, we're working to make things move forward. We're dealing with some obstacles that's sort of slowing some things down for us. But we, I think that we're really confident that eventually this is going to break free and it is going to move forward in the way that we want it to. And, you know, our self-confidence is up. Our self-worth is up. We're not letting this get us down. Okay. Um, how the other person sees us after we have talked about this with them or explained this to them or defended it to them. They're seeing us as somebody who does not want to go back to those old things that disappointed us and give those a second chance. They're seeing us as somebody who is being very analytical about those old things and that we are making a decision with what makes sense rather than with our heart or with our feelings. So with our feelings, we could be missing um, whatever was the disappointment, but we are... Um, because of the logic of the situation, we're not moving forward with it anyway. Okay, that's how they're seeing us.
I kind of want to see what this is all about. This is going to be what our expanded is about, I think. It's going to be this thing that we stood for. And I'm going to set aside those other cards about what people thought of us, too. Just to remind me their impressions. Okay, so... Now we're going to look at the flex period. Fellow Scorpios, this is where we have the lesson or experience that can change our perspective. We are getting really frustrated, and especially when it comes to things having to do with family or home. It looks like we're spending a lot of energy or a lot of money on either family or on home, trying to get something going that is secure and happy, and it seems like at every turn there's some kind of obstacle or frustration. <laughs> at the same time, we're feeling really confused because nothing seems to be changing. We feel like we understand what needs to change. We have an idea about how to change it. And yet nothing seems to be changing. So we've got some confusion going on there. What else is happening? This really is causing us to hold back. We're deciding that we need to sort of step back and regroup before we put any money into the situation or before we put any more energy into the situation, whether it's something, you know, tangible around the house or whether it's a relationship with family. We're holding back. We're either holding back money or we're holding back our emotions. We're not sharing those. And I think because we're holding back, that actually brings us some happiness. You know, just investing and investing and investing, whether it's emotionally or financially, more and more was making us worried and stressed out. So now we're feeling happy that we've cut the investment off, whichever way that's playing out. And that is ending a situation that's been long standing that has caused a lot of tension. So it could be that we're, we're done with, I think this is probably more, we're done with some type of relationship, whether it's a friendship or whether it's something that is, you know, with a tribe member or whether it's something in the family, I think we're just done trying to make that work. And that is actually bringing us some relief. I'm leaning a lot more towards family situation there. Now, where we see ourselves at the end of this month, fellow Scorpios, that's interesting. There is something new that that shows up, that makes us feel incredibly, incredibly grateful. And I think what's happening is um, we're not getting communication from somebody who was being deceptive or, or illusionary towards us. And so we're not getting in messages that are trying to lead us down some type of primrose, primrose path or yellow brick road when the bricks are all black, you know. Um, we're, not, we're not getting those deceptive type messages anymore. You know, that kind of communication has just gone quiet. So whoever it was that was sending us those messages that were deceptive, that were sort of leading us down a path that really wasn't taking us anywhere, we're not hearing from them now. And I feel like we're very happy that we're not hearing from them now. We're feeling grateful of that and feeling liberated. Okay. So let me go ahead and close out the monthly. I am going to do the expanded on whatever that was that we were standing for. So if you're interested in checking out more specifics about that, feel free to use the link below in the description box. Thank you, of course, to all of you who are here spending some of your precious time with me. Thank you also for the thumbs ups and the shares on this video. Thank you to those of you who are buying the expanded readings. Thank you for those of you who participate in the live super chats. And of course, thank you to those of you who are buying live readings and live Reiki sessions from me. It is because of all of you guys' support across the board that I'm able to do what I love to do for my living. So thank you very much. Peace out.